He said he was going to reply after the... After okay, this, right? So or a three-part or some shit? Gonna fuck what? Mr. B said he was going to reply after this guy's, like, done, right? No. I think it was... A, I think okay. it's just like a... He's going to let it go yap and then probably get a response. I think, brother... Otherwise, you, you know what you know what you have? Oh, you have? You have a thing where, like... Dude, but what about this? Dude, but what about this? And it's all, like... Small burgers or nothing burgers or whatever, and it's like your channel becomes just drama. Focus around one instance of essay. Yeah, I'm one, still trying to get all the, the essay allegations into one video. Can you your screen? Part three, final video until I'm still trying uh, to figure responds, it out. at least. Yeah, I got you. I'm not caught uh, up though. I'm, sort of over I'm like behind how like a week easy on that would be. Drama. Um, as far as like getting everything approved with victims and lawyers and like also. You know, traditional media is involved. I mean, you know, New York Times, Time Magazine, uh, also like documentary people. I don't know. You're like, hey, I've worked with Netflix and Hulu and Apple TV and Peacock. Are you interested? And I'm like, I don't know. But, you know, I think people should go to those more legitimate sources to get their stories out. Um, so I've been referring people to other people. These um, videos are getting more schizo. Traditional has, you know, more resources than I do and, and better legal protections than I do for sure. I do have sort of that, that bigger project. The so... The original part three. Um, and I have a lot of other interviews and, and other allegations that uh, I'm working on putting together so I have something for when Mr. Beast responds. If his response is bad, then I can sort of point out, hey, he lied here and here and uh, he's deflected and strongman argument or whatever, uh, as well as like dropping new allegations um, and doing it in an opportune way so they get the most eyeballs. Um, but yeah, I just want to say, this is just around sort of one allegation. Also, everything in this video is allegedly, so it is not monetized. It's for educational purposes only. This is a... Uh, Matters of public interest. I'll put a full disclaimer on screen. Um, but yeah, here's the video. Okay, today I'm going to be covering uh, Mr. B's Secret CEO, James Warren, uh, and his involvement in SA and SA cover-ups, uh, like the one including his uh, best friend, LaCoya Hill, who also happens to be Mr. Beast's secret chief operating officer, or was. Uh, and then I want to touch on the man himself, Jimmy Donaldson. Mr. Beast has very publicly and transparently been engaging in a massive cover-up, um, deleting a lot of evidence, and I think a lot of this cover-up is going uh, sort of completely under the radar. We're not we're not even aware of, of what's being um, swept under the rug, and they're getting away with, with hiding and deleting evidence. Uh, after I called out James Warren by name in my last video, his uh, Instagram and Facebook got taken down, and his LinkedIn got taken down. Uh, so, so quick profile on James Warren. Uh, he's, he's Jimmy's cousin and, and secret CEO, and I say secret because, you know, they're, they're not very open about that fact. Like, he, he doesn't post about it on social media. It wasn't ever attached to his LinkedIn. He's never featured featured or, or really referenced anywhere. I heard that he's very aggressive. I've, I, I've heard him referred to as a psychopath who screams at people and hits his, his uh, girlfriends. Uh, there's allegedly domestic violence charges that were filed against him. Um, and I say allegedly because it turns out there's a lot of people in North Carolina named James Warren who, who assault their girlfriends, I guess. So uh, I'm still having people look into these cases, um, specifically that surprise witness on YouTube, uh, she's been super helpful in like behind the scenes, just submitting uh, freedom of information requests and, and just helping me out a lot in general. She's super nice, super smart. She'll be posting a lot of updates on, on her channel uh, as she has been about, about the Mr. Beast situation. Mr. Beast video caused a military operation. Uh, James Warren also allegedly an ex-drug <laughs> addict. Uh, I've heard that he yeah. he offered cocaine and hookers I to editors to stay no late. Uh, and, then, and then the really big thing is that there was some incident between him and a female colleague uh, that resulted in the female colleague leaving the company and receiving three years uh, in severance pay. I'm still actively looking into this incident, so if you have information, let me know. Uh, but I've heard from multiple credible sources that this this is true and this did happen. Also, I should quickly clarify that a lot of this investigation is allegedly, um, you know, that's sort of the nature of these, these instances. I have a lot of testimony, corroborating testimony. Um, but the reason I'm publishing this is that I mean, hopefully it brings more well, information to light. Doesn't like sound after, too bad. You know, the Jake so Weddle interview that I posted, uh, which was all mostly testimony. Uh, people came out corroborating a story, and then ultimately uh, Jimmy ended up apologizing and offering him $190,000, which to me I think is is uh, most likely an admission of guilt. You know, you don't apologize for for things that you didn't do. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to get that. Up. Links uh, apology.
Um, Most likely an admission of guilt. You know, you don't apologize for, for things that you didn't do. Also I'll disagree with that. I'll disagree with that. An apology is never an admission of guilt, ever. Um, I, listen, listen. Unless it is, it is not de facto an admission of guilt. So question mark, okay? So, you've never fought with your girlfriend or argued and you said sorry, even though you didn't do it? Does that never happen with you? You probably don't go outside. You probably never had friends. You probably don't have a girlfriend. You probably never had any of this shit. Okay? Um, the reality is, you probably apologize for things that didn't happen or you didn't do more than half the time in interpersonal relationships. That's just what it is. You want to say it's, that's not true? Sure, do whatever, but you don't live in the real world. Moving on. So anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way, but what's not allegedly is that James Warren is the former COO of acquisitions of a real estate investment firm called Greenstone Ventures LLC, which is one of the businesses listed in this indictment of his former uh, business partner, Joshua Hutchins, uh, who was sentenced to 10 years in prison for running a real estate Ponzi scheme. Ponzi schemes are great up until they just go bust. Uh, so before working at Mr. Beast, James Warren uh, was involved in a literal fraud. Uh, in fact, he's actually mentioned in the court transcripts uh, uh, of this case. This is the sentence hearing for Joshua Hutchins. I'm gonna highlight testimony from just one of these victims, a retirement age woman named Sylvia. She testifies, I came to know Mr. Hutchins through a very reputable and successful real estate attorney who highly recommended Mr. Hutchins and who eventually left his agency to become the chief operating officer of Mr. Hutchins investment firm. The chief operating officer of Mr. Hutchins investment firm. She explains that the reason she trusted Mr. Hutchins was through the strong recommendation and endorsement from that very reputable and successful real estate agent. He represented Mr. Hutchins as highly competent and capable. He presented a successful track record in how Mr. Hutchins had delivered for other investments. On next page, page 16, she testifies, my trust was and has been severely violated. This is the equivalent of financial Many of us entrusted Mr. Hutchins, who we've come to know to be fraudulent. Just $1.3 plus million dollars of worthless paper signed by him fraudulently misrepresented in the courts. Uh, so Hutchins was convicted for soliciting investment monies by telling victims that their money would be put to work on a specific property. Uh, in fact, Hutchins did not put all the investor funds to work on the property on which the investor was solicited to invest, and instead regularly used investor funds on other properties or personal expenses. Uh, now, what kind of personal expenses? Well, apparently he bought an AR-15 and hundreds of rounds of ammunition. Uh, his wife had a domestic violence order of protection against him. Uh, he's accused of calling his wife a lying rat and sending menacing photos of himself in tactical gear in the woods to her friends and family. Again, according to Sylvia's testimony, James Warren represented Mr. Hutchins as highly competent and capable. She continues on page 17. James Warren, the then realtor who recommended me to Hutchins, also encouraged us to work with Mr. Hutchins on trying to make it work. And we did until it became very evident as to his apparent intent of complete fraud. So James appearing to sort of try to mediate this exchange saying, hey, give him a chance. Don't, don't pursue him, don't sue him, just make it work, right? The real losses due to fraud are evident. Financially, he's devastated my retirement. I can only hope and thank the good Lord that I- this is, a, this is a guy that did business with the guy that owns part of Mr. Beast that works with Mr. Beast, right? This have a brain this to be able to function and try to earn back as much as possible. The impact, over $1.3 million in real losses. I got it right, right? These are not, I got a piece of property. It was all fraud. And she goes on to describe her financial troubles through the years, supporting her mother who had Alzheimer's disease, uh, how in the crash of 2008, she lost her job and for two years was unemployed. In 2014, she had a severe cancer diagnosis, was out of work for over a year. She continues, in spite of all that, I've lived very frugally and tried to make things work. I've made him know of all my history and I told him I could not take the risk. He and James Warren, the then realtor, stated, oh, real estate. She goes on to describe how they presented it as a safe investment opportunity for her. And then James Warren's business partner defrauded her of $1.3 million. Now, can I claim definitively that James Warren was aware of the fraud that was taking place and willingly complicit uh, in helping Mr. Hutchins defraud uh, old ladies? No, but uh, from what I've heard of James Warren's character, how he's hit ex-girlfriends, not let them leave the house, beat his dog, 
uh, defrauded people in his own ways. Uh, Creative Juice is, is an interesting one that could be that looked into, uh, which was done with minute. Mr. Beast, as well as another scheme that we'll get into that he conducted with LaCoya Hill. I, I personally believe that when he was working with Mr. Hutchins, he was in similar company. I, I think the COO of acquisitions would, uh, would know and, and be sort of responsible for uh, properties not being properly acquired through, through the court system. But again, that's my opinion. That's all allegedly. Now onto his alleged best friend, LaCoya Hill. They both went to UNC Chapel Hill together, and they both, after graduating, got into real estate. Uh, but by 2017, LaCoya Hill was running an adult entertainment event business in San Francisco called LaCoya Hill Entertainment. Uh, then in 2019, he was hired to Mr. Beast as a producer. <laughs> Our party evolved into this place where you know you have the drag queens, the muscle daddies, the bears, the twinks, the like posh boys. Now I'm all for personal freedoms. I believe adults should be able to do whatever they want. However, I question what uh, qualified the sort of go-go dance drag daddy of San Francisco for a job producing YouTube content for children. But you know, it'd also be weird if, if Mr. Beast hired uh, really John brother? Sims as the janitor, I guess. Uh, it's not the real issue though. The issue is that in late 2021, he was allegedly fired for sexually assaulting his assistant. Now I put fired in quotation marks because he was actually quietly moved to the dubbing company, which was Unilingo at the time. Here is uh, proof that he used the LaCoya at Unilingo.tv email, links back to him, links to these photos, one of which was the profile picture for his YouTube channel, uh, which also after my first video, his YouTube channel mysteriously got deleted. Uh, and at some point, his uh, Twitter also got deleted. I don't know if that's when he sexually assaulted his assistant. I don't know if that's after my first video got posted. Either way, uh, booty call Wednesdays are canceled. He was actually brought really? back to Mr. Beast in 2023 after sexually assaulting his assistant prior uh, and promoted to chief financial officer, which is how I personally was introduced to him. Here's some evidence from the internal Slack channel at Mr. Beast showing LaCoya Hill acting in some COO capacity, saying there's news reporters outside, do not engage with them. Uh, this was shortly after the Time Magazine article came out. Uh, so here I have a document uh, showing Testimony from former Mr. Beast employees uh, talking about LaCoya Hill. And uh, when I say verified former Mr. Beast employee, I had them send some form of proof. Um, I, I know who some of these people are. They just want to remain anonymous. But, uh, you know, I'm willing to share this with, like, uh, an independent third party if, if it needs to happen. Personally, I don't think Mr. Beast is going to deny sort of this LaCoya Hill story that I'm going to show you. Uh, but here's the first testimony, and I'll say this person is, is especially credible, in my opinion. I ask them, did you see or hear of any sexual misconduct at the company? They say, yes, LaCoya Hill, the current COO. In 2021, he had an assistant named, victim's name. I heard LaCoya acted very inappropriately with victim, booking hotel rooms with only one bed, walking around in his underwear, having victim come to his house and showing him his sex toy collection. Just in general, LaCoya made victim uncomfortable. Victim started complaining to higher ups and a report got written. LaCoya was put on paid leave for like a month. Then Mr. Beast moved him to the dubbing company and he was hired back in 2023 and was promoted to COO, even though Jimmy, James, and Sue 100% know his history. Also, I heard that when Victim was let go, he was given $30,000 in severance. Uh, I could get you Victim's number. I don't know if he'd talk. Uh, I respond, yeah, that'd be great. Also, is there proof he moved to the dubbing company? I could look, it was the original dubbing company called Unilingo. Mr. Beast practically forced them to hire LaCoya and then they poached Unilingo's employees and copied their whole business and created Creator Global. Verified employee number two, I asked them the same question, have you heard of any sexual misconduct at the company? And they say, yes, I don't know how to spell their name, but LaCoya, something like that. He was brought in last year after having not worked there for a year or so at a very high level. I respond, LaCoya Hill. <laughs> Why is this guy talking into a cat's ass? They say, the reason he had been asked to leave previously is that he had sexually harassed someone that still worked at the company when he was brought back. Yes, LaCoya Hill. But they brought him back knowing he had sexually harassed an employee previously. And people often talk about LaCoya making them very uncomfortable on shoots. I verify employee number three. I'm looking into more accusations of sexual misconduct at the company. Wondering if there's anything you could corroborate. Have you heard of anything about LaCoya Hill? They respond, the old gay guy who likes to bang 18-year-old straight employees. Yeah, I've heard of him. Anything non-consensual to your knowledge? 
I heard he got in trouble for hooking up with his 18 year old straight assistant, but the company kept it quiet from what I heard. He's a producer and worked in the adult entertainment before Mr. Beast. Yeah, LaCoya Hill Entertainment. I heard he was fired for sexual harassment then brought back a year later. That's what I heard too. Employee number four. Do you know who LaCoya Hill is? Yes. And you're aware of the case that has been covered up for some time. Explain. Essayed multiple people, apparently roofied multiple people as well. A verified employee number five, I'll also say this person is especially credible, uh, but they worked there a while ago, like 2020, 2021, uh, around then. Okay, few things. LaCoya sexually assaulted his assistant who was straight and LaCoya was gay. You probably already know that, but James is best friends with him, so holy shit was that surprising that they kept him around way longer than they should have. There were reports of him making the assistant sleep in the same room slash bed with him on trips, touching him inappropriately, and dangling his job in front of him. Uh, employee number six, did you hear anything about LaCoya Hill? I heard that incident bro, happened, I heard- Bro, I wonder- Bro, I, I'm genuinely curious about this. Why are things written the way that they are? Every one of them are saying it. Reports of, I heard of, people said that. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Hmm. Looking up with his 18 year old straight assistant, but the covered up for some time. Explain, essayed multiple people, apparently roofied multiple people as well. A verified employee number five also slash bed with him on trips, touching him inappropriately and dangling his job in front of him. Uh, employee number six, did you hear anything about LaCoya Hill? I heard that incident happened. I heard they let him go and I heard that I'm just thinking DMs. I'm just saying, I'm saying, why are they talking like that? They don't have to. They brought him back and just put him in a different com department. And I think, I don't know, but I think he's working there again. Uh, now, recently, Mr. Beast has let LaCoya Hill go. This is I heard as well. They had this sort of leaked email where they say, uh, therefore, along with Jeff Hausenbold, our new president and COO, right? Alluding, alluding to the fact that LaCoya Hill is no longer working there. Now, I have been open with Mr. Beast uh, about the fact that I was going to cover LaCoya Hill. This is a single frame in my first video where I reference LaCoya. He's also in my Twitter header. And I've also just told people who work at Mr. Beast that uh, they have to let LaCoya Hill go. Uh, so they did what I wanted and let him go, right? Well, just on a whim, I decided to look into the Creator Global LinkedIn, and it had gone private to where everyone just shows up as a LinkedIn member, LinkedIn member, right? But I saw this, L, LinkedIn member, president of Creator Global. I thought, you know what, that's a little suspicious. Uh, so I reached out to one of my connections well, close to Mr. Mic, Beast man. and I said, hey, can you look into this account for me? Because sometimes if you have connections, you can see uh, private LinkedIn accounts. And this is what they saw. LaCoya Hill listed as the current president at Creator Global. No work history between graduating UNC in May 2001 and becoming the president at Creator Global in 2024. Dude, this is like the three cup game where you gotta like keep track of uh, the pet and this as, as Mr. Beast just moves them between companies. They just sort of kept moving them around. You know, like those killer whales at SeaWorld, after it kills a trainer, they'll then move it up to Seattle. They don't give them their background. Which I heard, you know, Mr. Beast or, or James Warren forced Unilingo to hire LaCoya as sort of part of their partnership without, you know, sending them the, the report on uh, his, his alleged sexual misconduct at the company. I also have a voice memo from James Warren showing that they told Unilingo to process a $28,000 bonus for LaCoya, uh, which there's definitely something suspicious going on with that. Hey buddy, it's James. Um, sorry to be bothering you. I've done my absolute best not to bother you. Um, but uh, LaCoya had uh, presented a bunch of stuff to me and Jimmy a little bit ago, all really great stuff. Um, but he had asked me and Jimmy personally, he's like, hey, you know, can I have a, a $28,000 bonus for work I did in the past? And I'm like, yeah, of course, man. Um, and the reason for that is, is uh, I had brought him up to my level and I don't take bonuses. So for like two years, he didn't get any bonuses when our guys were getting like crazy percentage bonuses. Um, I need a favor. Um, Sue cannot process this bonus through Beast. Um, I need a solid. Can you please process a 28K bonus for LaCoya? Let me know, bye. And then they used LaCoya to try to steal Unilingo's business poach their employees, take their clients, uh, and then Mr. Beast launched Creator Global, where LaCoya Hill is currently listed as the president. Well, that's just so business. So that's LaCoya but, yeah. Hill. And, th and that's just what I can put on the record. I will say that if Mr. Beast tries to- Well, it's why usually people have non-competes. You, you, you have a non-compete in your contract or whatever, so that this doesn't happen, but that's just business. Hey guys, you guys, guys, sometimes we're gonna watch a video, 
Okay, I mean, we're gonna watch a video that has things that are common practice that are pretty much everyday thing, right? And they're made to be sound like they're, oh my goodness, this is one of those things. You say it's scummy, not really. It's, it's, that seems like it's a very common uh, business practice unless there's like non-competes. Deny this, just saying. more evidence will be brought to light and more people will definitely come out uh, defending me saying, hey, this is true, these allegations are true. This is all true, allegedly, in my opinion, for legal reasons. Okay, now let's move on to the man himself, Jimmy Donaldson. Uh, first, I'll show this testimony from another former Mr. Beast employee just to show sort of the work culture. Yes, poaching, okay, yeah. I, was, I wasn't clear before. Let me reel it back and we'll say it, uh, how it is. Poaching is absolutely fine, and I, th I think it, sh it should be an encouraged practice. If my workplace is better for you, I offer you better, a better package, more money, a better life, to work at my company and use your skill and expertise to, uh, to come to my company, I absolutely will do that. And I, I, and, and I hope you come over and work for my company. I don't understand where's the loss here. There's none. Uh, especially from a female's perspective. As uh, she says, on my very first day, I was told to avoid being alone in a room with certain people in positions of power. At least once a week, I was subjugated to inappropriate questions and conversations. Once a male coworker asked me what I would do if Jimmy assaulted or harassed me. On another occasion, the same coworker said it wasn't fair that women could just decide a past sexual encounter wasn't consensual. Many of the men I worked with would make assault and pet jokes on a daily basis. They would scream and hit walls when they got upset. The minute any woman leaves a room, they would talk about if slash how they would fuck her. I've heard men comment on female contestants' bodies many times. Not everyone behaves this way, but no one openly speaks out against it in fear of losing their job. If you complain about any of this, you'll be shamed for being too sensitive or just ignored. You can't take anything to HR either because Jimmy's mom runs it. It's pretty common for people to essentially get paid to leave and stay quiet if they make enough noise about something. There is no employee handbook, by the way. If you ask for one or what the company's policies are, they just tell you to ask them and they'll let you know if anything is against the rules. But again, there's nothing in writing, which is true. The, the leaked document is, is just the production manual. Uh, not given to all employees. Uh, here's another testimony. This person will go on the record. This is Jess, uh, who accused Ava Chris Tyson of, of sexual assault. I think her case has been sort of mostly ignored because she probably wasn't, she wasn't a minor when it happened, but she was a Mr. Beast employee and you can see in her evidence and her communications with the company, this, the clear signs of a cover up. I uh, can see them like threatening her with legal, legal action and emails and, and uh, this is for company uh, like normally you post employee applications, you have a company, you just have for exchanging. And saying like, oh, we're gonna have a law firm investigate this. Well, they had one firm do an internal investigation, McGuire Woods LLP, the same law firm that sent me my first cease and desist. Uh, but then they hired, a, I guess, Harvey Weinstein's legal team, allegedly to re-review everything uh, so i guess they weren't happy with the results of the first internal investigation also yeah this new law firm quinn emmanuel mr beast has worked with them previously uh, allegedly to internally investigate laquoia hill's sexual misconduct so uh why don't you make that report public jimmy uh, anyway here's just his testimony i only hung out with jimmy a handful of times but he definitely was a little more reserved around me because i wasn't a part of his inner circle or the boys club as it's called it Usually, these efforts are made to protect the victims, which is the most um, f most important fact in those things. That was what I s would assume, which I think is uh, perfectly fine. Uh, that's something you might be not be familiar with, which is fine. But I'm just telling you as a fact, uh, the way this goes on is that this often is done to protect the victim. That's what that's what it's about. If something you got something were wronged. You don't want to wrong them again, but make their shit public. That's what it is. He was a little more reserved around me because I wasn't a part of his inner circle or the boys club, as it's called. I did hear Jimmy straight up say that the guy making a documentary on him right so now shut up, but has I, footage of him saying stuff that would get, absolutely get him canceled. It's just a well-known thing. The boys club is misogynistic and looks down on women in the company, despite what they might say publicly. Behind closed doors, the women in the company know that the culture is a problem. I have heard multiple stories of Jimmy being directly informed of SA happening at the company and proactively working to keep it quiet. So just directly implicating Jimmy in the SA cover-ups. LaCoya with an 18-year-old straight assistant. So she's one of the people corroborating that story. 
Ava told Jimmy about a time she was essayed by another talent member on a private jet, and talent members slash employees making advances towards contestants was a regular occurrence. The reason all of this was able to happen for so long is because Jimmy is deeply misogynistic and only respects what he considers to be traditional women. He pushed those values into the company when he created it and it resulted in several essay allegations we know about and probably a lot more we don't know yet. Uh, which I will say a lot of the essay- Dude, I, I, gotta be, I gotta be honest with you guys, listen, I'm absolutely unbiased. I look at this, I look at this part of the message and this like stains and taints the whole previous thing that was written above it. It's almost like, um, like a personal view slash vendetta slash like a upsetment or disagreement with, with the with Jimmy. That's what it seems like. Say allegations are still not public. That's like man, just because if if this is that stained, the rest of it will be stained too. The essay allegations are still not public. Like man, just fire James Warren and Lacoya Hill. Fire them. Don't just move them around. Uh, or I'm gonna start dropping nukes. Anyway, let's. Uh, I'm I'm gonna move Maddie Spadell away from all this. I just want to touch on this briefly. Uh, so Maddie Spadell, who's Mr. Beast's very public ex-girlfriend of two and a half years, posted this on her Instagram story. Uh, she doesn't mention Jimmy by name. It's sort of vague, I think, probably either because she's under an NDA or maybe she... I spent years, years being quiet, never acknowledging the time I'm quite sure on those who saw me I don't want drama. I don't want anything. I just want to speak up my new self. It impacted the way I saw myself, the way I interpreted the future. I just admit it. There's no user manual. Uh, okay. Must be general entries. Okay. I believe it should be a cautionary tale. If someone's too good to be true, how just other women will be how he treats you. You are smart. Okay. Gotcha. She's just testing the waters to see how people respond before sharing more information. Uh, but also it's like not that vague if you have reading comprehension and can read context clues. She says she spent years being quiet, never acknowledging that time in her well, life. I mean, it is a 19 to 21 are formative years, impacted how she saw herself and how she trusted men. Months of therapy. She says how he treats other women will ultimately be how he treats you. So how does Jimmy treat other women? I don't, I don't really get along with women. I don't, I don't really get along with women. I don't, I don't really get along with women. Well, women are stupid because they're inferior to men. That when she and a group of contestants who were menstruating during the event had asked the production staff about getting their underwear more quickly, she had been told that it was not a medical emergency. You'll never actually respect a woman, but just act like you respect them. My God. Mr. Beast withheld my birth control. I have ovarian cysts. You can't just stop taking birth control. I don't, I don't really get along with women. Also in this podcast, Jimmy goes on to talk about his relationship with his current girlfriend Tia what? in uh, very weird ways in my opinion. For us now, like an idea of a date is just to like take an IQ test and then study and see if we can get a higher. An idea of a date is just to like take an IQ test and then she was like, I'm an author. And I was like, fuck oh, yeah, good. She has a hobby and then I just DM'd her. I was like, oh, so your book, can I read it? She sent it over, read the whole book and it was just like acting like it was the greatest book ever. I don't, I don't really get along with women. It's all of our jobs to protect our friends, our moms, our wives, our sisters, our daughters, ourselves from people like that. That's, that's, that's a pretty clear statement, if you ask me. Now, I almost feel like there's been- Yeah. General rule of thumb, okay? If you got something to say, fucking say it, right? Just to protect somebody or future victims, say what the fuck is up, right? Or don't say anything at all. Because um, rumors and gossiping is a pretty severe um, method of manipulation that women and men often do. Mostly women, um, because of the relationships. Sorry, women out there, okay? It, it, it is, men have their own manipulative tactics, or whatever, right? And they have their own shit. But, that type of manipulation is mostly done by the women, which is uh, gossiping, rumors, attack of somebody's character, um, bullshit like that. And it's, uh, that's just what it is right here. And a campaign again. Unless it's some real shit, therefore, if you want to go for it, go it. Do real shit, because all this does is, is character assassination. You put in a lot of holes, and people will leave and fill the holes with their own imagination and it causes uh, a lot of damage, right? And this is genuinely causing damage and that's what it is. So unless this has some validity, some importance, I mean, you should, you should say. Against Maddie Spadell uh, to discredit her before she's even shared any information. Because I just left um, this group of friends that I was with in, in this house 
I don't want drama. Of course it says, I don't want drama. I don't want any bad things with my friends. I don't want to cause any sort of, uh, anybody any harm, okay guys? But just saying, if you live with somebody and they're hiding things from you, it might be better for you to check it out. But I'm just telling you guys, in general, if you live with somebody and your food is gone, there's a chance they're stealing it. Also, if you have roommates and you wake up with bruises in, in the next morning, you might be getting attacked by your roommates. No drama though. No drama though. I'm not, I'm not saying this is what happened. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like, if this, a lot this of might like be like that. Like, gold digger allegations. I'll say this is also from that uh, Rolling Stone article. They referenced the breakup. Uh, the reporter says, you know, Maddie Spidell, who's appeared in a handful of videos, uh, those in Mr. Beast's inner circle told me that Spidell had been a positive influence, forcing Donaldson to prioritize work-life balance more. Donaldson did not want to comment on the record about the breakup, citing Spidell's privacy, yet Tyson, Chris Tyson, uh, says Donaldson's singular focus on work was a major contributing factor. I think that's what he's... At 22, I missed messages. At 22? What? James Warren and LaCoya Hill. Fire them, don't just move them around. Uh, or I'm gonna start dropping nukes. What? Discord ones. The what? Can't see if I'm sorry. Probably either sharing news or months. So therapy. No, I'm not she saying how essay to food. Um, I mean her statement. I don't think she's talking about essay or anything, right? I don't, I don't think she is. He treats other women will ultimately be how he treats you. So how does Jimmy treat other women? I don't, I don't really get along with women. I don't, I don't. Why Spidell, who's appeared in a handful of videos, uh, those in Mr. Beast's inner circle told me that Spidell had been a positive influence, forcing Donaldson to prioritize work-life balance more. Donaldson did not want to comment on the record about the breakup, citing Spidell's privacy, yet Tyson, Chris Tyson, uh, says Donaldson's singular focus on work was a major contributing factor. I think that's what he's going to be looking for next. Somebody who can match his obsession with business and money and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so not a bad word. People, people that are going to do something great have to put out a great deal of effort to doing that thing, right? And that'll cause a imbalance in the life um, work balance, right? And if you're not a partner who is capable of handling that lack and kind of maintaining the ship or whatever, well, you should leave, right? If you if you're gonna stick around and then you, you I, that's just odd. I find it odd. It's not for, it's, it's not a lifestyle that's for everybody. It's not a lifestyle that's made for everybody. If you can't handle it, don't. Heard to be said about Maddie Spadell from Jimmy or the people in his inner circle, which is pretty unusual uh, of an ex-girlfriend. Yeah, I'll show some of the brain dead media coverage uh, headed by Cuck Star and his, his news organization Drama Alert. So here's just one of his many posts about Maddie. A uh, thread of every time Mr. B's ex-girlfriend allegedly shaded him. Uh, downplaying the clout chasing claims against her. What is it? Mr. B's ex-girlfriend allegedly shaded him, uh, downplaying the clout-chasing claims against her. So let's see this extensive thread. Uh, one post of a TikTok where she says she was traumatized at 19. Why do you think that's about Jimmy, Keemstar? Allegedly complaining about Mr. Beast fans. This is her most popular TikTok period with over 6.5 million views and was posted last year. And then Drama Alert goes on to give one more example. And that's the end of the thread. So see her most popular TikTok, uh, seems to be alluding to her relationship with Mr. Beast. Uh, and then she has hundreds of more TikToks where she never even tried to recreate the success of that first TikTok, right? Like if I'm her social media manager, I'm telling her, hey, post about Jimmy Moore. Uh, and she obviously knows that if she did that, she would get more views, uh, and yet she doesn't do it. Hundreds of TikToks, about 30 of them are about Taylor Swift, maybe three are about her uh, ex-boyfriend of two and a half years, which for a Swifty, uh, it's extremely, extremely low to, to post only three times about your ex-boyfriend who's uh, now incredibly famous. So if she, if she was cloud chasing, she's doing a horrible job at it. Now, Drama Alert, on the other hand, is, has posted more times in the past month about Maddie Spidell than Maddie Spidell has ever posted about. Something I hate doing, I try to do it as, as 
as as least as possible, whatever fucking as little as I can, is making assumptions about other people's um, complicated uh, interpersonal relationships. I try my best not to, okay, because things are complicated, things are elaborate, and as an outsider, I don't know a lot of components that are very important, and I there's no way I could, right? So when they, they say some cryptic shit, I'm not gonna make. It. She could say I was extremely traumatized in this thing, and I'm still not gonna, not gonna say, hey, it's probably his fault. It's probably something that he did. It could be something something that that just happened, that that's random, that has nothing to do with any of them. Like like some somebody like like his uncle walked in or some shit like that, and and made a big fuss or something like that, right? And it traumatized or whatever. Is that his fault? Her fault? Not really. Is it so sort of traumatic? Yes. So it's like about Mr. Beast. That's why you don't do cryptic shit there. Uh, so I just wanted to address that because I think Mr. Beast knows Maddie has nukes against him and uh, he's trying to discredit her. So let's look at this leaked email. This is from Mr. Beast. It says, uh, yesterday Dawson saved 100 billion. Whoa, guys. Whoa. Ho guys, I don't know how that got there. I don't. I, that was the wrong email. I don't know how that got. I don't know what that is. Email. This is from Mr. Beast. It says, uh, Yesterday, Dawson saved 100 billion. Whoa, guys. Whoa, ho guys. I don't know how that got there. I don't. I, that was the wrong I email. It. I don't know how that got there. Uh, yeah, so I've actually heard from pretty credible people that this email was not leaked. So, uh, you know, why lie about it? A devious or deceptive tendencies. Here he is quoted in that Rolling Stone article saying, I'm great at lying. Uh, but I want to focus in on this part where they say, therefore, along with Jeff Hausenbold, our new president and COO, we will be hiring a new chief human resource officer, chief financial officer, interesting, uh, and general counsel along with other roles to add capacity and competencies to foster a better internal culture as we continue to grow. So what's interesting about this is that the only person named in an initiative to foster a better internal culture is Jeff Hausenbold. Uh, but what's ironic about this is that Jeff Hausenbold has been in the news previously for, for the internal culture that he helped create as managing partner at the SoftBank Vision Fund. Here's the New York Post. Nasty executives shaped macho culture at SoftBank Vision Fund. And here's Bloomberg Business Week. SoftBank Vision Fund employees depict a culture of recklessness. It has also been described as an environment of sycophancy and harassment. Uh, so seemingly all the problems that people have with uh, Mr. Beast's internal culture. Uh, but this Bloomberg article also goes to call Jeff out by name. Jeff Hausenbold collects cars, including a blue Ferrari, and claims to own a 20,000 bottle wine cellar, although he doesn't drink himself. <laughs> uh, acquaintances described him as smart and arrogant and almost entirely lacking in self-awareness. Uh, he's also gotten away with some questionable behavior. In a discussion about whether to invest in the stationary bike startup Peloton in 2017, according to two people who were in the meeting, Hausenbold opined that its exercise equipment appealed in part to men who masturbated to its workout videos. Baby, I Dude, I want to jerk off! Fuck! I want to jerk off! Look at this! A soft bank denied the claims, but it's an oddly specific thing for two people to make up a story about masturbating to Peloton workout videos. So yeah, maybe I don't see the vision with uh, hiring this guy as the new president. Also, this is just what I can share right now. I do have more information that I'm trying to get out. Uh, you know, trying to get permission from the victims and everything. Um, also trying to save some things for, for when Mr. Beast responds. Uh, so anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Gotcha. Okay. That was something. Yeah, just see. Let's do, let's do a game of a uh, of vidlog before before uh, uh, before I switch over to uh, Twitch and shit. Thoughts? Okay, when you go to Twitch, we should play this game called Pilgrim. Did you see it on Discord? I sent it to you.